My name is Jess Heilman. I am a formulation chemist and the newest member of the Herb Nerd team. Um, Colleen, the founder of Herb Nerd, has brought me on to collaborate and make a cosmetic chemistries course. Um, so I'm very excited to be here. Uh, we are launching a formula building box course and early bird signups are going to start on August 1st. So click the link below, go to herbnerd.com and uh, sign up. So Colleen and I thought that it would be really cool to be able to take some time to show you what a cosmetic chemist lab looks like. Um, and so I'm a consultant in the industry, which means that I get to formulate from home, which is super cool, but also gives me the opportunity to show you guys how you can set up your own labs at home and uh, the equipment that you would need to make these products. So um, before we get started and I show you the equipment, I want to talk about lab safety. So I know that these ingredients are natural ingredients, um, however, and these are skincare products, however, they are still chemicals. And um, when we get, there's certain of these ingredients that if they're at a high enough concentration, uh, we can injure ourselves. So for the citric acid, for instance, it's obviously an acid, it's gonna have a low pH, and uh, if we get that on our skin at a high concentration, it's gonna burn us, um, and we really don't want that. So we want to make sure that we're going over safety and we're talking to you guys about this and you're prepared to have fun and learn, but do it safely so no one gets hurt. Um, cool, so let's get started on personal protective equipment. So it's PPE. Um, and so the first thing I wanna talk about is a lab coat. So I have tie-dyed my lab coat because I'm super cool. Um, you guys don't have to have a tie-dye lab coat, it's not a requirement. Um, you don't even have to have a lab coat. You can use a kitchen apron um, if that works for you. Um, I would just suggest that you wear a long sleeve shirt underneath that kitchen apron because the most important parts that we're gonna have to be covering are our arms, our forearms mostly, and um, the front of our bodies because you know that's what we're most likely going to be spilling stuff on. So. Um, lab coat or apron and long sleeves. The uh, next piece of PPE is lab goggles. Um, so I just have a regular pair of lab, go lab goggles. <laughs> they have all different shapes, uh, all different sizes and styles. Um, you can get them at the hardware store. You can order them online. Um, if you do wear, um, if you wear glasses, it is very important to make sure that you get a pair of goggles that is going to fit over top of the glasses. And they do make them, they're um, larger on the sides and they're kind of like a big rectangle across the face. So this is important because we wanna make sure that your eyes are protected, but also that you can see what you're doing. Um, the third piece of PPE are gloves. So I use nitrile gloves um, personally because I'm allergic to latex, so if anybody else has a latex allergy out there, nitrile gloves are your best bet. Um, you can also use latex gloves if you don't have an allergy. So um, the thing with gloves is that you want to make sure that you get a size that is not um, too tight. You know, you want to be able to feel your fingers, but not too loose because if they're loose, um, you won't have as much dexterity. You won't be able to grip things as well, and it just kind of becomes a little dangerous and potential for spilling and things like that. Great, so now that we're dressed and ready to go, we have our PPE on, we can go ahead and take a look at all the equipment. So moving on to lab equipment. This is the setup that I use every single day. I formulate on this bench all day, honestly. I'm probably down here way too much. Um, it is in my basement and it gets a little bit cold down here, so the lab coat does help. Um, a lot of this equipment is kind of a higher level than what will be needed to make the gel cleanser and the emulsified moisturizer for the formulation building blocks class. So what I'm going to do is put a list together of all the equipment that I personally have that you're going to see today and alternatives that you can purchase so that you can make these batches in your home. So to make the batches, um, what I use this mixer here. 
So this is just a motor on top and it uses a propeller. So it has a propeller mixer coming out of it and you use a little, <laughs> you just use a little key uh, to, un to loosen it and you can replace the propeller and move it up and down depending on at what level you want to be mixing it. So this is super useful. I used to use a much smaller one and it just wasn't powerful enough to make some of the batches that I need to make and especially make larger sizes. So I upgraded to this version and I believe I purchased it on Amazon. So I will put that link out there. Um, and it comes with a propeller, which is great. And so down here we have my hot plates. You can tell that they are very well used um, and I use them every single day things spill and then it burns, but that's okay. We keep using them. So these are excellent because they come with a temperature probe. So you would place this probe into your sample and it will actually heat up your product to a set temperature without you needing to monitor it, which is great because if you're using a just a regular hot plate and you're checking the temperature every once in a while, there's a chance that it's gonna get way too hot too fast and you didn't notice and then you have to restart. So this really helps me because I multitask a lot. So I'll be writing formulas while I'm letting things heat up or I'm testing batches from yesterday while I'm letting something heat up. So this is super great for me. When I first started consulting, I did just have regular plain old hot plates, so I will make sure to link both for you guys. It is, uh, nope, there is no issue with using the regular hot plates either. This just makes my life so much easier and makes helps, helps me with multitasking. So I use this balance here. So this balance is um, great. So it weighs up to a kilo, uh, which works for me because I don't make batches larger than a kilo usually. This balance goes out to two decimal places, which is very important because I, I make small batches. When I'm first starting out form formulating a product, I usually make about 150 grams at a time. So having those two decimal places is great for um, accuracy and making sure that we're weighing the correct amount of product. There are scales that have three decimal places. They are just crazy expensive. So if you would like to get one, absolutely go for it. It's just not in my budget. And I'm sure there are also some kitchen style scales that we might be able to get the two decimal place ones as well, but this is relatively affordable. So now we're moving on to some testing equipment that we have. So this is my pH meter. By no means do you need to purchase a pH meter um, I personally love this Hannah pH meter. It is super functional. It does many other things other than pH. Uh, it does like molality, but I um, only need the pH, so that's all I really use it for. And of course we have our different pH buffers. So whenever we, ha we are calibrating our equipment, which should be regularly, I calibrate it at least weekly, sometimes twice a week. And so we're gonna use three different points for calibration. So we want to make sure that the buffers are in between the pH of our products. So I have a, oh, I have a four, a seven, and a 10. So every product that I formulate is between those. So we are totally fine with that. If we were making a peeling product, so, you know, like a lactic acid peel for an esthetician, then we would probably want to grab a buffer of two and um, calibrate with that because it would be below our range of what we have of a four and we wanna make sure we're getting accurate pH results. So other than the equipment, the thing, other things I use every single day are pipettes. So I use these um, three milliliter pipettes. They're super useful when you're measuring liquids um, and it's very, the droplet sizes are pretty accurate. So you can, if you only need to add 0.05 grams of something, you definitely can with that. And I also utilize um, this homogenizer. So this is a homogenizer. It's actually used in the restaurant industry, uh, but I needed, 
needed something that wasn't going to be too expensive, but was going to have this rotor, rotor stator style homogenizer. So this is what I need to be able to formulate products in order to scale up and scale up into large manufacturing batches because they use rotor stator style homogenizers generally like in line with the tank or drop-ins. Um, and this worked really well for me. So for this course though, all you need is uh, an immersion blender, just a regular old kitchen immersion blender. It's what I used for about a year until um, I started formulating some more complicated products for some clients and needed something a little bit um, heftier. Uh, one other thing I wanted to share about these hot plates is they also function as magnetic stirs. So if you need to stir something, I, as you can tell, I only have one propeller mixer, but sometimes there's two phases. Like when we're going to make the emulsified moisturizer, we're going to have two phases, an oil phase and a water phase. So I always put the water phase on my propeller mixer and then I will use the magnetic stir bar and on the and I'll put it into the beaker that has the oil and it will stir with uh, with the magnet internally here so that we don't burn the bottom of the oil and we can stir it and we make sure that the temperature remains the same throughout the whole product. And we are also making sure that it's uniform and we're incorporating all the oils and waxes together as they're melting. So I guess one more thing that I would like to share with you guys is um, cleanliness. So a clean lab is a safe lab and a happy lab. Um, it really does help to keep your lab clean. It prevents cross-contamination. Think of it just like your kitchen. You're not going to, you know, prepare one meal that has uh, chicken or raw meat and then not clean up after your next meal. So while we don't have the capacity of spreading salmonella to batches, we do just want to make sure that everything's clean and we don't cr like mix over ingredients. Um, so I, after every single batch, I wipe I wipe down my counter, I clean all of my beakers, I clean my propeller mixer, and I make sure to wipe every every surface down and I sanitize all of my equipment with 70% IPA. And so when I'm making batches, I will use beakers. I use glass beakers for this. So I have a few different sizes that I like to use. Um, 250 mil is generally the size 250 mil is generally the size that I use for most of my batches uh, because I will make 150 grams at a time so this is a great size for that um, the next size that I use is a 600 mil beaker this is also used often when I start scaling up or I need to make batches to send up for testing this is the size beaker that we are going to use for both the gel cleanser and the uh, emulsified moisturizer. And other sizes that are very useful, and I think I think my 50 mil beakers are up in the sink actually, it's supposed to get cleaned, but um, I have 100 mil beakers here too. So using these small beakers to weigh out our ingredients as we go is a much more sustainable option than using the plastic weigh boats. Uh, you are welcome to use those if you would like. Some do find that easier, especially if you're learning. Um, I do prefer these and I will be using these, so I will make sure to add both options to the list. So I think that completes our tour. If you have any questions on my lab, you have any questions with any of the equipment I've showed, or if you would like to know more information uh, about how I put all this together, uh, put a comment down below, reach out to us, and, and I hope to see you in the class. I'm excited to make these batches with you all.